Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if my T-Swap here is any indication, today I'm going to be talking about Stranger Things, the mid-season finale. So yeah, this episode was like super epic, guys. Um, I'd say this and episode 4 were probably like the best of the season so far. I really enjoyed it. Also, um, I really enjoyed watching like two episodes a day, because it kind of spreads it out more, you know, and I'm not like... I still get to make theories as I watch it, which is really fun. Never been much of a binge watcher. That's just a personal thing, you know? Uh, something I want to say before I start, like, with the episode itself, I wish that they do weekly releases, you know? Like, maybe two or three episodes a week. That way everybody's on the same page, because, you know, my sister watched all of it in the day. So, at least it didn't spoil it for me. But I kind of like when everybody's on the same page, you know? Anyway, getting on to the show itself, um, yeah, this mid-season finale was epic. Um, I love all the different side, the subplots, you know, it's like, um, all of them are like, so you get invested with each and every character. There's not, there's not a character in the season I do not like. I was kind of surprised to see that like Will, Jonathan thing, that wasn't even in this episode. Which is surprising because like, I thought we'd see it because it's 98 minutes long, but we didn't because there's so much other stuff to talk about. I don't exactly mind that much because that's probably my least favorite of the main full plot lines. My favorite is, um, like I said last time, is the Hawkins plot line just because I feel like those are the most likable characters, you know? Really big fan of like Dustin and Steve and Robin and Max and, you know, Lucas. Um, I just feel like they're kind of my favorite characters as a group. Though I did like when we um, finally saw Hopper reunite with Joyce and man does the Demogorgon you know, look so much better here than it did last time. You can tell they really amped up the budget with that thing. But yeah, that scene when Hopper meets Joyce again it's wonderful, you know? It's like we've been waiting this entire time for it, and it's just really sweet to see Hopper struggle and get tortured for all these episodes, and then finally, you know, he sees her again, and I guess life is worth living for him now. Though, so, um, I, I think we're probably going to get back to, like, his whole idea that he puts her life in danger, so I feel like he's going to try to start distancing himself from her and the kids, which I don't want to happen. Because he's a great guy and, you know, they love him. But I feel like it might happen. We also see the origin story for the Vecna. And, yep, it is the creepy guy from Twilight. It was a very well executed plot twist, you know. Um, the whole, like, flashback dream sequences for Eleven was very haunting, you know. I also thought uh, Vecna's acting was really good, you know. How um, both the Vecna, the guy from the lab... And the little boy from Victor Creel's son, all are the same person. Really well done there. I was not really expecting it or connecting the dots. So, you know, I saw him do the thing with the eyes. And I was like, okay, then that guy is the Vecna. But I wasn't expecting the little kid also being him. That was a good twist. And I like how they said that, yeah, no, Eleven didn't kill all those children. So I feel like, you know, they kind of had it coming for bullying, huh? Just gonna, just gonna say that right now. Definitely had it coming. Yeah, it wasn't whole that killed all those children. It was him, cause he's just a, he's just a maniac, full of nihilism, yucky stuff like that. Yeah, um, like all these things coming to a head is very, you know, well written. It doesn't feel contrived. It doesn't feel rushed. But yeah, um, I'd say at the moment. It's tied with season one as my favorite season. It's Streets Ahead of seasons two and three, in my opinion. If you don't know what Streets Ahead is, you're Streets Behind. So throughout this episode, we get like really good performances, you know. Um, Millie does a great job. So does Joyce and Hopple. And Nancy gets quite a few moments to shine, too. So yeah, this is like a really good, you know, mid-season finale. Just because, you know, the stakes are at an all-time high. I can't wait to see what happens in the next two episodes. I mean, I'm not exactly bothered by the fact that there's a month break because I have all these other shows coming up. And, you know, it kind of spreads it out. You know, more theories. It's fun. You know, after that, it's going to be in like another three-year break until season five. So, you know, it's kind of crazy. So, yeah, let me know what you guys thought uh, down in the comment section below. What, what do you guys think is going to happen in the, in the next two episodes? Do you think two and a half hours is very too long for an episode of television? Or do you think it's not long enough? 
So yeah, subscribe if you want to see my thoughts on you know the last two episodes when it comes out on July 1st. And in the meantime, I'll be making videos on The Boys, Piggy Blindles, Toltrud, The Wizard of Oz movie, Sherlock Holmes books, Top Gun Maverick, Doctor Who, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane movie, and Westworld. So yeah, um, subscribe if you're interested in any of those. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.